Hi right, there guys, Ken here, your Thrifty Apprentice, and welcome back to another Let's Talk Stick Friday. Um, today's video is going to be a sort of quick one. I am looking at some new-to-me watercolor pencils. These are Stettler's Tenant Watercolor Pencil. I picked up a pack of 12 of them off of Amazon um, a few weeks back, and I'm just getting a chance to crack them open and really uh, play with them and use them. As you can see, I've already swatched them out. And I'm using some really, really, really economical um, watercolor paper that I picked up from Walmart in a really big jumbo pad. Um, it's actually advertised to be by the B Company. Now, I'm not really used to this particular grade of paper from them, but it's really textured. Um, so I felt like it would be good to do landscapes on. So I just taped down a 4x4 four four piece of paper here. Um, not big at all. Just wanted to play around with the pencils, like I said. And as you can see, as I start to add color to the paper, how the pencil is just kind of falling in between the tooth of that texture, um, which I thought would lend really, really well to landscape paintings. Uh, now, the box that these pencils came in did not have any light fast ratings on it. Um, but before I get around to doing a review on these pencils, I will do some research to see if I could possibly source that information. Uh, my primary purpose for ordering these pencils was because I was originally looking for a more economical alternative to Durant Graphitent pencils. And when I ran across the ad for these on Amazon, they were actually advertised as water-soluble graphite, um, colored graphite. And then it said tinted watercolored pencils. So I was like, okay, let's order these and give them a whirl and see, you know, how they fare out before I just jump in on the deep end and go ahead and order those Durant Graphitent pencils, which I have been really, really, really interested in. Um, but that's a story for a different day, right? Uh, so here I have just taken um, some, some of the shades of blue. Um, there are two. There's the tones are tinted, but they're still sort of like, for some of the colors, a more cool and a more warm tone. Um, so I'm just using those combinations of blues to pull off my sky as well as the little stream um, that I have coming from the horizon to the foreground. There are 12 colors, as I originally told you, uh, but they aren't, I don't know... Uh, they are, it seems to be missing some of the colors as far as primary go. And I think I see what they were going for when they put this particular um, set of pencils together. The colors are really muted. They're not really bright or vibrant. Uh, and, but they, and they call for sort of a, a dark feel to your painting, which I found appealing. Um, as you see here, I am just using a water brush to... I dispersed a pigment from uh, one of the green pencils as well as one of the brown, one of the more ochre colors um, that was in the set. And I'm just using it to paint in the grass area or the plain area along both sides of my stream. Now, this is primarily my background. And once I'm done with this, I'm going to sketch in some trees and foliage in the foreground. I'm thinking that I'm probably going to do a few of these little 4x4 four four paintings like this with the Graphitent pencils. And then I'm going to get a shadow box and hang them in a the shadow box on um, like an organic line with those little miniature clothes pins. I think it'll cause for a really cute um, wall decor once everything is said and done. And I'm not sure if I'll actually shoot the video for the other little 4x4 four four paintings I do. Um, but I will be sure to share the um, finished outcome once I get everything done and get it put into the shadow box. So here is where I'm using the lighter green and the darker green um, to draw the foliage in the foreground. I'm using the same brown that I used to kind of put in the dirt areas in, in, the, in the meadows to do the bark of the trees and the branches. Um, again, the green that went into the foliage in the front is being used to emulate the leaves. And I'm using the darker green just to add in a little shadow um, to those leaves so that it'll have a little depth and dimension. Now, the, I'm going for sort of art, artsy, artistic work here. I'm not going for realism at all. But I was really enjoying the way that paper 
was working out. Now, this is some really cheap paper, guys. And, and when I say cheap, I mean really cheap. If I'm not mistaken, I paid 10 bucks for 50 sheets, 9 by 12, 140 pound cold press. And it says that it's by the B Paper Company, Be Inspired. All of the B Paper I've used in the past has been 100% cotton paper. Um, I do know that the company was like recently bought out, maybe. I do believe that's what I heard. So maybe they've rebranded and now they're putting out a few different products that are becoming more available. Uh, and this is definitely a cellulose paper. This is not cotton at all. But I really love the way it worked out with doing landscapes. And as you can see with the pencils, I feel like it's a really good pair. So here I'm just using that water brush to dispense the pigment and the foliage in the front. And uh, I picked this little trick up here from Lindsay the Frugal Crafter. I was watching one of her videos one day and I noticed that she used the tape around her paper to as a little palette when she was doing pencil paintings. And I just thought, okay, that's a really neat idea because it's gonna help me save. I used to do it on watercolor paper, you know, a little scrap piece of paper, tear it up into a couple of pieces. Uh, but doing it on the tape, in my opinion, is a lot more convenient and it helps to save on waste. So thank you, Lindsay, for that tip. She's a wonderful, wonderful teacher, guys. If you ever get a chance, go ahead, swing on over to the Frugal Crafter YouTube page. Like, follow, subscribe. Uh, you will learn a lot, Lord knows I do. I love her to death, and um, I think she does a wonderful job at everything that she does. So here, I use that brown, as I told you guys, to fill in the bark. And then I use a more, um, <clears throat> excuse me, gold tone, maybe? Uh, I, the pencils do not have any color names on them, so I had to create my own number system for them um, as far as swatching them out the way I can refer back to the pencils that I'm using. Um, but be that as it may, they do have color capping on the end that is pretty close to the actual color of the pencils. So although they don't have names, you can see what you're using and kind of guess at it. Um, mixing those two greens together gave me sort of a sappy, olivey green tone. I really love the way that those came out. And I'm just, you know, scribbling in foliage, or, or should I say leaves, on each of the branches in order to kind of feel the, the painting in a little bit more. Because it's pretty much going to be all that I do. It was really quick, really cute. Just wanted to test the pencils out and um, see what I could possibly uh, start doing with them. Now I'm going to do a few more paintings with them before I decide to do a review on them. Hey, well, you know, if you guys liked anything or learned anything in this video, uh, please go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Remember that thumbs up and sharing the video are going to help um, with growing the channel. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell so that you can get notifications when other content go up. Follow us on uh, Thrifty Apprentice YouTube and um, Instagram. Uh, or should I say Facebook and Instagram? <laughs> uh, and remember, you can share your work with us on the Facebook page. We'd we'll love to see it. The community would love to see it. And if you guys do any of the demos that I do, please, please go ahead and share them on, on Facebook. I would love to see that. on. And just keep painting. Thank you.